Okay, welcome to Daily 3D Revolve. Today I'm going to be doing a little different tutorial. Um, instead of creating a part, I'm going to be uh, talking about how to add uh, textures to your uh, STL files. A subscriber had asked if it was possible to put a mirror finish on a Design Spark mechanical model, and I answered, sure it is. Uh, depends on the program you use. I primarily use Rhino. Uh, Rhino is a really great program. It uh, has a 180 day, I believe, trial. And then even after the trial, uh, it will expire, but it will still let you run it so you can learn. But you're, you're not able to save the files or export them or do anything other than, other than learn the program. And if you get to a point where you really like Rhino, you could go ahead and purchase it. So we're going to use Rhino for this demonstration. So what I'm going to do here, I have a couple of STL files on the desktop here. Uh, we'll do the 160 millimeter mountain bike disc brake that I had created not too long ago. So we just want to drag the STL file on top of Rhino 7. Uh, then you're going to get a little window like this. We created it in millimeters, so just go ahead and go click OK there. And then I'm going to run without saving. This is once it expires, this is what it tells you. So we're going to go ahead and go to perspective. So we'll just double click there. And then we're going to click and drag. We're going to spin our, our disc here. So in Rhino, you have to select the model to apply. So we'll do a control A on your keyboard. That's going to get everything. Now up here, over here in your render window is where you would add textures. So this is the material tab. So you want to click there. And then you want to go ahead and click this plus. And then you, I usually go import from material libraries because there's more of a selection. We'll go to metal. And then you want to pick this polished metal. This is shiny. And then normally a disc is usually a stainless steel. It could be titanium. Um, we'll go ahead and go to this polished stainless steel. This will give it a nice shiny uh, reflective texture. So this is going to be it here. So there's two ways to apply in Rhino. You can go ahead and click here and just kind of drag over. Or you can right mouse click, which I prefer, and say assign to object. Make sure that it's, it is uh, selected. And now um, we want to view this. We want to come up here to view and we want to go down to ray trace. Uh, so this is going to be our file here. So we want to add a uh, darker color to the background. So to do that, we want to come up here to the, re the render tab. And then we want to go down to backdrops and the solid color. We want to click the, the white right there. And then we want to add like a, a gray or maybe a dark gray. Okay, so now what we want to do is select that. We want to come down here to the lighting. And then we want to scroll down. Just, you don't have to turn the lighting on, just click off of that. And we want to go, uh, let's see, was it Skylight? Okay, we want to click Skylight, and then you're going to click here on this Use Custom Environment. Okay, so what that's going to do, it's going to give a reflection onto this thing. So you want to come over here um, to this one here, sorry. It's one that says Studio. You want to click there and then you want to click on the Use New Environments Plus and then you want to import from Environment Library. So you're going to get all these environments and what these are, these are just scenes. Um, you don't actually see the scene. The only way that you see the scene is within the model. So what it's doing is since it's a polished reflective uh, surface, it's going to be reflecting the, uh, the environment. So. We'll click like here, like just to give you an idea, this uh, BCN airport. We'll go ahead and click that. And then we want to click off of it. And now you can see that that, uh, that environment is reflecting in this uh, surface here. So um, it, makes it, it makes an interesting little uh, um, texture if you, want, if you want to have a little uh, reflective uh, model. And you can change, you could put all different types in here. Um, you could go ahead and click that BC again. You could say, um, go back to the studio. You could click the on the new one. You could say basic environment. That's just gonna be like this. And then we wanna go click that again. Use a new environment, click the plus, and then we'll import. And you have all of these in your uh, rendering for Rhino. Um, you could do office. We'll try that office one out. And then they usually don't 
you don't see them until you start moving stuff around. Like you see this is a really nice one. That's the desk right there. So this is reflecting the environment desk. That's the wood of the desk. And this is a very uh, good way to put a, a, a reflection on your, uh, on your model. So we could uh, rotate this until we have a good image. I'm not sure what that is. I think that's maybe some kind of plant. Um, so this is one way to, to do a, um, have a reflective texture on your, uh, on your uh, STL file that you create. Um, and I think, I'm not positive, but I think you can actually create your own uh, environments. I'm not really sure how to go about doing that, but I know there's possibly there's a way. Um, so we'll go ahead and scroll down. We'll try a new one out. Um, let's try. Let's try the Seattle Library, and then we'll go ahead and spin this. Make sure that when you apply these, if you are trying this, that you spin your model, because that's going to get you the. Uh, that's going to uh, let you see uh, the reflections. And try different ways, like see how I'm spinning this to downward, and it's showing you that this is a reflection here. So whenever you got one that you like, you go ahead and just uh, create a mod create a capture capture out of this screen capture, and then um, go ahead and try another one. So you can do this with uh, with any uh, STL file that you've created in Design Spark, and you could go here to More Types. Uh, then you they have a basic one. You have import, and you have your library. Um, you could do it at, at, at airport here. Go ahead and spin that. This is just going to show the reflection. So really, the more surface area you have, uh, the more of a reflection that you're going to see. So this doesn't this disc break doesn't have a lot of uh, surface space. So if you had something like the maybe you created a, a side of a car door, that's got a lot of surface area. So if you used one of these environmental maps, you would actually be able to see uh, the, the shiny stuff in, in your map there. So um, we could move that over. And then if we wanted to, we could go ahead and bring in another uh, object that I have. This is a bolt, nut and bolt that I had done. And then we can just say open this. And then I don't want to save changes. We're just going to go ahead and say no there. And then we'll go yes to the OK to the millimeters. We'll make this full size. And then we'll double click perspective. So here's the bolt. So you can do the same thing with a bolt. Do con Control A, select everything. Come over here to your textures. And then go ahead and click that plus. Import from library. We could do a, uh, let's go to metal. And then go to polished. And then we could uh, scroll down. Let's do like a polished gold, so it's a little bit different color. Now we'll go right mouse click, assign to object. Now remember, we got to come up here to view and go down to ray trace. Ray trace is going to give you the best looking 3D model, uh, but it takes it go, has to go up to 1,000 cycles before it's fully rendered. So make sure when you're in ray trace, if you do anything, like whenever you move something or you make a change to something, it's going to start over. So keep that in mind. So now we want to come over here to the, the rendering tab. We want to go down to the backdrop and just add a, a little bit of a color there. So this is, now normally these, when you, when you do these reflective textures, they look dull like this because there's nothing reflect, reflecting off of the bolt. So in order to do that, remember that you have to come in here and you have to add use custom environment and then you have to go see how it becomes a little bit shinier and then you have to go to your uh, right here the studio then you have to click this plus import from the environment library and then you have to import something so now you can see this this has a little bit more surface area so you can see like the window right there and this is the side of the wall um, sometimes you know sometimes you want a model that reflects stuff like this um, I did an hourglass, and an hourglass is a perfect example of needing to have a reflective surface because you want that 
you want stuff to bounce off the glass and you want it to look cool so this is really how you would do it is you'd come in here and mess around with these uh, Rhino um, environmental maps just go here and go to this one use new uh, import from environmental library and then um, just try a different one we could go uh, let's do this one and they're all going to be different you know this one looks like it's some kind of wood or maybe a desk or something so you could just play around and uh, until you have a uh, one that you like I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't usually apply a uh, environmental map to something that's not large um, you need to have that surface space so you can see the reflection better. Uh, a good environmental map would be like if you created a, uh, a pool, a pool table, and there was the pool balls on the table, and then you wanted to have an environmental map maybe of an overhead lamp, and you wanted the lamp's reflection to be in maybe the eight ball. That'd be a, that's a perfect example of why you would use an environmental map. I mean, it doesn't really make much sense to apply it to a bolt, but I'm just kind of doing this as an example. You'd want to have something large. Let me go through my uh, models here to see if I can find something that's a little bit bigger. Um, maybe, uh, maybe a coffee mug would be a good a good environmental map to use because there's a lot of space. Uh, I got a 3D model here, so let's go try this coffee mug, and then. Um, Let's just go ahead and create new. Don't save changes here. Cancel. Let's close this. No. Then we're just going to go ahead and now uh, I don't want to up update. We'll go ahead and drag that coffee mug on top of Rhino. Sorry about that noise. Someone is doing the laundry. It's kind of making a lot of noise. So we'll go ahead and do the perspective and we'll spin this. Do a control A to select everything. Then we'll grab this uh, texture here. Go to the plus, import from library. Um, you don't really want to make a uh, ceramic mug or a mug out of metal. So we'll go ceramic and then we'll do like a blue glaze. And then we'll come over here and view this by ray trace. And then um, we'll go over here and change this. The rendering down to a uh, maybe like a, a gray, darker gray, and then I'm not sure if you use the environmental maps. I think you have to. Uh, this has to be a polished texture, so I'm not sure that this is going to work. But we can try. Let's go import. Let's try the. Let's try just the airport one. All right. Yeah. It's not. Whenever it's flat, you have to. You have to pick a reflective coloring so you'd have to go back to the material go select another color import from library go to maybe let's try metal and we'll do the polished and then we'll do polished bronze let's try the bronze and then we're going to right mouse click there and ass assign to object now we'll go ahead and spin this see this is a good this is a good one because you can see pieces of the airport in there uh, so re remember when you're using your, and then we have to go back here, when, you, when you're using your uh, uh, environmental maps, you want to make sure you have lighting on something too. So we might want to come in here. Um, let's scroll down a little bit, maybe add a skylight to it. And then if it's not light enough, add a sunlight. You're going to have, you have to move stuff around. You have to adjust the lighting. Um, but uh, this is pretty much how you would how you'd want to go about doing that and then if you want to change it just remember to come down to the uh, you be right here make add a new one import from library and then try something else just try them until you get something that you like that's kind of different looking and then you could get a nice looking mug like this and at that point you probably want to make this a little darker maybe even black 
or maybe like a brown color. No, nah, brown looks doesn't look good. Go dark gray, and then we'll leave it like that. Okay, that's going to end today's tutorial on how to add a mirror texture using Rhino, using the Rhino software and applying your uh, your texture, your polish texture, uh, and then using your uh, using custom environmental map maps for this. Uh, these are going to be right here, and um, there's also a way to do this in uh, Blender. Uh, Blender works kind of similar to this. You'd have to add, uh, you know, a texture, a polished texture, and then you'd have to change your lighting, and change your camera, and do stuff like that. But uh, this is a good way to do it. Um, Rhino's 180-day trial, and then after that, it works, but you can't save anything. So, but you can still use it. Okay, um, I'm going to end the tutorial there. Hopefully you enjoyed watching and you got some useful tips out of the video. Thanks again for watching.